Hey everyone, welcome back to the new lecture with ISO IEC 17025 2017 edition and now ensuring the validity of results. And how to ensure that your results are valid, are accurate with an acceptable range after addition of measurement uncertainty. And that clause divided into three sub clauses. 771 monitoring the validity of results or quality control activities. 772 proficiency test and interlab comparison sample. 773 analysis of data after that from monitoring activities. 771 about monitoring the validity of results and that will be by quality control samples that you will run with every sequence. Lab shall have a procedure for monitoring the validity of results. You shall prepare a procedure for monitoring the validity of results. Monitoring the validity of results by quality control samples that you will run with every sequence to ensure the validity of your results. And the resulting data after that you want to analyze. The resulting data shall be recorded in such a way to detect trends. How to detect the trends and that will be by control chart. After you will run quality control samples, you have a spike sample. This, the result of spike sample will be added to the control chart to draw the control chart and to detect trends control chart is very important to monitor the validity of results but over a period of time period of time that you will specify in the lab and apply statistical techniques to review the results you want to review the results and that will be why calculations for uh, these data by using excel sheets so this point talking about quality control samples quality control samples that you will run with every sequence you have blank sample you have spike sample you have also uh, calibration and verification standards and all of these quality control samples should be within acceptable range according to the guideline you use and from the most important quality control samples control chart to detect the trends in all of your data to monitor the validity of results but over a period of time after long time you will detect if there is any problem in your lab activity or not and you can solve this problem and that also based on the guideline that you will use and also monitoring shall be planned and reviewed you should have a plan for quality control samples that you will run with every sequence and also you can apply specific sequence to be followed inside the whole lab and that will be also recorded or mentioned in the procedure for monitoring of validity of results such as you can run an instrument blank at the beginning solvent blank which is the solvent blank mobile phase then calibration your calibration standards and another instrument blank and then verification standard verification standard after that also instrument blank before the spike sample then the spike sample after that also you can add an instrument blank in between each sample and here after a spike sample you can add all samples together all samples then at the end of the sequence you can add washing method for the instrument and also the data from quality control activities will be reviewed and that will be by the technical manager or technical lead of the unit and also during internal audits and include monitoring shall include for include all of them but not limited to them also using reference material or quality control materials reference material or certified reference material as I explained before it's a sample not a reference standard it's a reference material sample containing your target analytes at specific or known concentrations and that will be provided by CRM provider who is accredited according to ISO 17034 and he should provide you with a certificate containing this certificate will contain the parameters or analytes of interest and concentrations for each and the range the acceptance range for each parameter reference material can be used during your validation to check the trueness of the method and after validation also you can analyze certified reference material for from the, the targeted matrices to ensure that you can get a valid result for each 
matrix. And from quality control activity, you have alternative instrumentation that has been calibrated also to provide traceable results. Whatever followed inside the laboratories, you can have two instruments as example, both of them from the same brand, and uh, you can compare also between both of them using t-test to ensure that you can get valid results from each one of them. If you have now one instrument and you bring another instrument to analyze the same target analytes, you should compare between them. You should use t-test, t-test or f-test to ensure that you can get a valid result also from the alternative instrument. And another very important quality control activity to check the performance of the instrument before use. For every instrument inside the lab, before running the samples using this instrument, you have to check the performance of this instrument to ensure that this instrument is working well. So functional checks of equipment to ensure the performance of the equipment and make sure that they are working according to the specification. And for every instrument inside the lab, you should prepare a specific performance check form and record in this form all parameters required to be checked before running the instrument. And very important quality control activity, control chart. And that was not mentioned in 2005 edition, but was followed inside the laboratories because they know how much the importance of control chart to monitor the validity of results over a period of time. How to prepare control chart? You can check also the lecture that I explained before related to control chart. Intermediate checks on measuring equipment. Intermediate checks on measuring equipment. How to do this? You can run verification standard every 10 samples as mentioned in standard method for water. Run a verification standard every 10 samples to ensure the validity of results and also the performance of the instrument. So, after each 10 samples, after every 10 samples, you will run verification standard and then another 10 samples and another verification standard and so on. And if you put for each one of them, for any one of them, any of these verification standards, if it was not within the acceptable range, that means there is a problem in the instrument. So you should repeat, repeat whatever positive samples after this verification standard. And also we have repeated tests or calibration using the same or different methods. During your validation, you have repeatability and reproducibility. Replicate test of samples spiked with no concentration of target analytes with the same analyst, same method, same instrument, and short time scale that will be repeatability. And by different analysts, different methods, different instrument, and long time scale that will be reproducibility. And calibration, replicate calibration, that will be for calibration laboratories also and retesting or recalibrated of the retained items retained items such as sample need to be analyzed another time so if you analyze the sample and you got a result after some time you keep the sample for some time then you analyze the sample again and you got the same result or result closed to the original results that's retesting of the retained items and the method can will be able to get result which is close to the original and also in case of calibration laboratory if they recalibrate again any equipment another time after some time they will get they should get result closed to the original and also we have interlab comparison sample for some parameters you will not be able to get proficiency test sample pt sample and pt sample as i said before is very important to be analyzed every year for each accredited method in this case you can find a content lab who analyzed the same target analytes and you will prepare this sample interlab comparison sample for your lab and also can be for other laboratories then you will analyze this sample and you will send the result to this content lab content lab who is accredited according to iso iec 17 or 25 2017 edition and has all requirements for this document so you will analyze the sample and you will send the result to this lab if your result were closed or between the acceptance range for this sample in this case your results are accepted and you can depend on this sample instead of 
PT sample. And testing of blind samples. Blind sample, as you know, is a sample with the known concentration of target analytes will be prepared by the technical lead of the unit. He will provide this sample to the analyst who is responsible to analyze these target analytes. But this sample will be blind to the analyst. He will analyze and he will give the result to the technical lead to test his competency. And there should be review for the reporting results for all quality control activities from the technical lead of the unit or the senior analyst. These are examples for the quality control activities that can be followed inside the lab. But if you have reference method, you will find with this reference method attached all quality control activities that you should follow and also verification that you should follow. Then in this case, you should follow all of these parameters to ensure the validity of your results at the end. And second point, lab shall monitor its performance by comparison with the results of other laboratories. And that will be through PT sample or proficiency test sample, which is very important sample. This comparison of lab performance for this sample, comparison of lab performance against pre-established criteria. That sample will be provided by a PT provider who made the requirement of ISO IEC 17043, which contain general requirement for PT testing and shall be provided for each accredited method or any method need to be accredited. This PT provider will send you sample containing your target analytes and will send also for other laboratories that analyze the same target analytes. Then all of these laboratories will send the result to that provider who have pre-established criteria who have the result and the acceptance range for these target analytes, then he will send you the report, the final report containing if your result were accepted according to his criteria or not accepted. And as I said before, for some activity or for some parameters, you will not be able to get proficiency test sample. In this case, you shall analyze interlab comparison sample and that comparison of results of two or more laboratories and support statement of the equivalence of measurement of National Meteorological Institute. So traceability also shall be studied or shall be there in this sample. And there should be a PT plan every year. From each unit in the lab, they will prepare a specific PT plan for all activities or all target analytes need to be analyzed in this year for all methods need accredited or need to be accredited. And they will send this plan to the purchasing officer to proceed in this process. And also this plan will be sent or whatever PT requested from the PT provider sh shall be sent to the quality lead of the lab to follow after that. If there is any PT, if there is any PT who will be rejected or not accepted, he will raise non-conformity. And after raising non-conformity relating to rejected PT, the lab shall request another BT for these target analytes. And relating to risk-based approach, which is very important in this document, any data from monitoring activities shall be analyzed. And if it was out of control, in this case, action shall be taken to prevent incorrect results. As I explained before, in case of quality control samples that you will run with every sequence to ensure the validity of results, such as calibration standards, verification standards, spike sample, or control chart also. If you have any point out of control or you have any result out of the acceptance range according to the guideline you use, in this case, you shall repeat the analysis. And if you still have the same problem again and again, sometimes you need to go back to the development stage to develop or to change in the method. And in this case, you need to revalidate the method again. And also for PT sample, very important. If you have any PT rejected for any of your activities, you shall raise nonconformity and find the reason for that. Then the lab shall request another PT for this activity. And if you failed in the PT again and again, in this case, you shall go back to the development stage in the method and develop the method again, find the solution in the method, and you shall revalidate the method again. How to apply this clause? You shall prepare a procedure for ensuring the validity of results. 
procedure for ensuring the validity of results. Purpose of this procedure to describe quality control procedures or activities for monitoring the validity of results and that scope that will be applied to all lab activities. Procedure, first point, lab has internal, you will write this, lab has internal and external plan to ensure the validity of results and to monitor the performance of the analytical methods and resulting data from the plan from the quality control activities shall be recorded and analyzed in such a way that trends are detectable so control chart is very important to do this this monitoring shall be planned and reviewed you shall plan for this monitoring activities as we did here and after that any result from this plan shall be reviewed by the technical lead of the unit and internal quality control program as i said you have internal and external plan or program so internal quality control program you have negative control elements all planks that you will analyze blank or blank sand matrix blank or solvent blank or media blank in microbiology and positive control elements spike sample or uh, calibration standards or lab fortified blank or uh, verification standard or blind sample if you need for competency and you can also include the sequence that you should follow with every method or with every sequence solvent blank from the mobile phase and calibration standard after that or calibration standards then verification standards and in between you can add solvent blank also and after that spike sample and then all of your samples and each 10 samples you will run again verification standards or intermediate check standard to ensure that there was no problem happening during the run and all of these data shall be within the acceptable range according to the guideline you use and external quality control program which include PT sample interlab comparison sample and also CRM PT sample or PT plan that you will prepare every year for all accredited methods or need to be accredited and certified reference material also is important to check the trueness of the method during validation or verification and before running the method also you can analyze certified reference material from the matrix you use or you analyze for your target analytes to ensure the validity of the results that was the end of our lecture for today thank you and See you in the next lecture.